What's going on everyone? Tanner here and welcome back to yet another terrarium build. In today's video we're going to be making a mini detailed terrarium. Now the reason that I call it a mini detailed terrarium is because if you remember the tiny terrariums, we've got one of them here, they're so tiny that you actually can't do very much detailed work with them and they're really not that practical. Whereas something of this scale, although it is still small, it is much more practical than this and we can actually get a lot of detail in here. So in this one I want to show you that although you may be working on a pretty small scale like this, you can actually get a pretty detailed little terrarium. Before we get into the build itself I want to do a quick rundown on all of the materials here and then we'll start making the terrarium. Of course we have our little jar here, it's just a standard glass jar with a little cork lid. You can find these at craft stores. Uh, home decor stores, even at thrift stores, online, various places, so if you just look around I'm sure you can find something like this. Then up front we have some dechlorinated water, and this is a question that I get asked pretty frequently, but what type of water do you want to use inside of your terrarium? You want to use some form of purified or even spring water because straight tap water can have impurities in it that could harm your terrarium negatively, so definitely you want to use some form of water that is safe to use. And like I said, that would be spring water, purified water, anything like that. Here I have some Eco Complete, and this is typically used as a substrate in aquariums. I had some laying around, and I thought, hey, it might make a good material for the false bottom because I don't really want it to detract from the actual design, so I wanted to use a darker color, and I saw this, I'm like, okay, that will work well. And then I have some gravel up here. This is actually from a hardware store. I don't remember what exactly it was sold as, but it's just some standard slate stone or something of that sort and it will actually be used as the hardscape elements within here because it's so small we can't actually use large stones so working on a small scale we want to get small scale items. Over here we have some of my tropical terrarium substrate mix. As I've said before this is basically just my take on an ABG mix and if you want to learn how to make it check out this link up here but it works really well in terrariums because it provides optimal drainage among other things and normally I would add a charcoal layer into my terrariums but I also have the charcoal mixed into the substrate here so it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. And moving up here we have some spider wood. I don't typically like to use spider wood in terrariums because it's definitely prone to molding and it lasts much longer than other woods I've used but I had it laying around and I broke it up into some small pieces here. Now I doubt that I'm actually going to use all of it but better to have more than not enough. And over here we have our plants and again working on this small of a scale we have to keep all of our plants at a small scale as well so there's very few things that we could actually use aside from moss so what I have here are pretty much all thread moss and then a little bit of liverwort here and I put all the names up earlier in the video so if you go back you can see them there. Lastly we have my tongs and tweezers up front here. I'm probably primarily going to use these small ones here but I may have to use these for a few items so we'll see what happens. With all that out of the way, why don't we go ahead and finally make the terrarium. Now something that I've never actually talked about in other videos before but I think is worth mentioning is you'll notice that on this jar here it actually has a little seam from where the pieces of glass were blown together. Whenever you're making the terrarium, make sure that you put that on the spot that you don't want to see. I've done it in the past where you have your viewing side right here and you're just so caught up in making the terrarium that you don't realize that you have the seam running right on your viewing panel and before you know it you finish the entire terrarium and bam there's this line going straight through your terrarium so take note of that and make it so that it's on one of the clean faces anyways I've got just a piece of folded up paper here I'm gonna put a little bit of the eco complete in here I probably don't need much and we'll put it on into the terrarium So what I'm making here is the terrarium's false bottom. This is a very important component to all terrariums and in this case I'm just making it very simple. It's literally just going to be this eco complete. Uh, usually I like to put a barrier above the drainage element, this being the drainage element. But in this case since it's so small it's not really necessary because there's going to be very little water in here. So it's not going to create the issues that you typically would have on a larger scale. To make it easier to actually even this out and make it look how I want I just have a fan brush here used for painting. What I'm going to do is just brush it 
over top of the eco complete here to get the look that I want. Now typically, and you can do this with the false bottom, you can also do it with the substrate layer, but the false bottom will kind of dictate how your substrate lays, so it's probably easier to do it with the false bottom. But I'm just using the brush here to kind of make it deeper in the back and shallow in the front. Now the reason that I'm doing that here, I'll turn to the side so it's more apparent, shallow, deep. But the reason that I'm doing that is because it helps create a greater sense of depth. So you typically see me do that to some capacity in most of my terrariums. I might not usually do it with the false bottom, but I'll at least do it with a substrate layer. And as I said, it just creates a greater sense of depth because if your land is just flat, it's not gonna look as interesting. And this is an easy way to add interest. Next, I'm gonna put a little bit of substrate in the terrarium. Now I'm actually gonna do it with my tweezers here so I can be more calculated about it than just dumping it in. But I'm not going to add very much in here. In fact, probably just enough to cover up the eco complete because moss doesn't really need a ton of substrate. And we only have a little bit of space to work with here. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit in here just to get the look that we need. And that should be enough, just a little bit here. Now we'll move on to the hardscape. As I said, I have some spider wood and some stones here. I'm gonna start with the spider wood because it's gonna be the larger elements. You definitely don't have to start with the larger elements, but uh, sometimes that's the easiest way to go. So unfortunately, this piece is pretty large. I don't, we'll probably won't even be able to shut the cork. I wasn't thinking that that's gonna take up some space but we can actually probably get it right about there. So whenever you're viewing it, it will look something like that. Let me get another one in here. And why don't we move on to the stones? I have some smaller ones in here that I definitely want to use, but I feel like all of those other ones are just too large for what I'm trying to do. So the idea here is to make it kind of look like a tree that has been growing up and among some uh, stones here. So, or I guess rather a dead stump of a tree that was once growing as such. The hardscape is by far the most important part of any sort of nature scape, whether that be an aquarium, a terrarium, a vivarium, anything of that nature. The hardscape is just so important, so be sure to take your utmost time and patience whenever you're setting the elements. I've sat here for hours before scaping, and you know, not even to decide on that scape, I didn't like it, put it aside for a few hours even days came back and came up with something pretty quickly or even longer so really just take your time with it because it's very important and now in this case it's easier said than done because I'm not actually looking at this I'm looking at it on the screen from the camera so it's harder to escape than that typically would be for me I guess it's not entirely true though because I'm usually filming most of my builds Normally I don't have this many stones to choose from because I don't work on this small of a scale so it's kind of nice to be able to just dig through here and find ones that I think will work. In doing so it definitely helps to have a variation in stone size. You'll get a natural look, better texture, and an all around just more aesthetically pleasing look. Alright so the bones are there. I'm gonna put most of these larger stones away. We might add some little accent ones later on. But I think what I want to do now is add the moss so that way we can actually work the scape around the moss. But what I got here first is the liverwort which of course is not a moss but I want that for in the background here because it's going to be one of the taller growers. It's going to spread fast. I'm going to break it up into two plants here. And we're going to do our best to get this down in there without ruining the terrarium. We're going to switch on over to the big ones here, the big tweezers that is. 
just because they are straight. So, maybe, ooh. Right, that looks good. I like the placement. So then, I think that I want this one to be uh, right over in there. With every move, I feel like I'm going to ruin it. Freaks me out, but we got to do what we got to do. Next, we'll add some of this. I believe it's a thread moss. It sure looks like one. We're going to add that right here. If we can. Without ruining the whole thing. Alright. Better look at it. It's coming together. Now what we're going to do is just get sections of this moss here. Like little tiny sections of it. Put them down. In the foreground here. It's tough because all of this stuff is going to grow out of control in time. So we're really going to have to keep up with the maintenance on this if we want it to look a certain way if we wanted to keep that detail that is now it's up to me to actually do that I don't know if I will or not but we'll see what happens so it's close it's getting there we just gotta kinda of fine-tune everything here So I like how it looks, but I really want to tie everything together with just some of the really small detail elements, and that's going to be a few twigs and some stones, and then I think we'll call it a day. Now that the terrarium's done, we're just going to add some springtails in here. Now before I lose some of you guys because, oh, it's a bug, you're getting all freaked out, Relax, it's just a little springtail. What these guys do is we put them in the terrarium and they'll eat any mold that could potentially pop up. So as I said before, I don't typically use spider wood, so they're definitely gonna wanna be used in this case. So all I'm gonna do is just grab one of these pieces of charcoal from my master culture and hit it off to the side here to get some springtails on into the terrarium. So here we have it, the finalized terrarium. Overall I think it looks pretty good, it didn't turn out exactly how I had envisioned, but overall I like how it looks. What I did is I just sucked up some of that water with the pipette here, and all I'm going to do is just put a little drop or two inside this terrarium. One, two, three, and four, we'll go five. I think five should be good for now. Ah, we'll do six. I think that should be good. Keep in mind that there's moisture in the moss, in the substrate, all of the various elements already. So that will kind of get added into the water cycle along with the water that we just added. So you really don't need to overdo it. And last but not least, let's seal up the terrarium and call it a day.
And that's going to do it for today's terrarium build. Let me know what you thought about this terrarium down in the video description. Maybe what would you have changed about it? What do you like about it? And just all around what you thought about this build. I like how it turned out personally. It's not my favorite terrarium ever that I've made. And it didn't turn out exactly how I would have liked. But overall, I think it looks pretty cool. And as I always say with terrariums, they get better and better with time. So I suspect that this one's going to look much better in a month, three months time. So we'll see what happens from there on out. But that's about all I got for you guys today. This is probably going to be the last terrarium build that you'll see for about a month or so. Just because I'm still in the process of moving. We've got some cool builds coming up though, so stay tuned for that. As always, I appreciate you. I thank you for watching. If you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. What's going on everyone? Tanner here, and welcome back to yet another... Terrarium Build!